spring morning. Sun pours in the window as I sit here drinking coffee, reading Augustine, and finding him, as always, newly minted from when I first encountered him at school. Today I'm overcome with astonishment at the way we girls denied all that was mean in those revered philosophers we studied, who found us loathsome, loathsomely seductive, irrelevant at best in noble discourse among the sex, the only sex that counted. Wounded, we pretended not to mind it and wore tight sweaters to tease our shy professor. We sat in autumn su sunshine as the clouds arose from slimy desires of the flesh and from youth's seething spring. Thank you, Augustine. Attempting to seem blasé, our cheeks on fire, it didn't occur to us to rush from the room. Instead, we brushed aside the briars of unclean desire and struggled on through mires of misogyny until we arrived at Kierkegaard and began to see that though St. A. and Surin had much in common, including fear and trembling before women, the saint scared himself, while Surin was scared of us. How had we poor girls been flattered in their thraldom? Yes, it was always us, a rejected feminine from whom temptation came. It was our flesh with its deadly sweetness that led them on. Yet how could we not treasure Augustine, stuck fast in the bird lime of pleasure? The room full of adolescent poets, Manke, assuaged, bemused by music, let the meaning go. Swept by these song cadences, we were seduced. Some of us tried for a while to be well-trained souls and pious seekers enmeshed in the saint's dialectic, responsible for our actions, yet utterly helpless. A sensible girl would have barked like a dog before God. We students, children still, were shocked to learn the childish the children these men desired were younger than we. Augustine fancied a girl about 11, the age of Adodatus, Augustine's son. Surin, like Poe, eyed his girl before she was 16 to impose his will on a malleable child when she was not equipped to withstand or understand him. Ah, the Pygmalion instinct, mold the clay, create the compliant doll that can only obey, expecting to be abandoned minute by minute. It was then I abandoned philosophy, a minor loss, although I majored in it. There's a lot more, but I think that's enough. <laughs>